Martinez O'Rourke. Mr Speaker, the broadcasting time spent on opening and closing addresses by political parties at election time is substantially wasted these days because those addresses aren't really watched by very many people. Whether there's an all-black test on at the same time or not, people just don't watch them anymore. So the bill enables parties instead to use public money to communicate with uh, voters through other means, in particular through the digital media as well as other broadcasting means. And it does that by removing the requirements for the broadcasting by Television New Zealand and Radio New Zealand of opening and closing addresses so that parties would instead then be able to use an equivalent allocation of funding for internet advertising in addition to television and radio advertising as is currently permitted. Now, there's nothing wrong with that. That's fine as far as it goes, but there is a problem. The bill provides for the appropriation of public money to fund those election programmes and advertisements, and the Electoral Commission, as we know, is responsible for deciding how the money is to be allocated to parties. The bill generally re-enacts those existing provisions relating to allocations to the parties, and the Electoral Commission must allocate to eligible parties in accordance with the statutory criteria. And they are these. A, the number of persons who voted at the preceding general election for a party and its candidates. B, the number of persons who voted at any by-election held since the preceding general election. C, the number of members of parliament a political party had immediately before the end of the last parliament. D, any relationships that exist between one political party and another. E, any other indications of public support for a party, such as the results of opinion polls and the number of members of the party. F, the need to provide a fair opportunity for each registered political party to convey its policies to the public through broadcasting. So those are the criteria. Because of that, Mr Speaker, New Zealand First is going to have to oppose this bill unless the government undertakes that it will also legislate to change those criteria. Because we think they are unfair, we think they are archaic, not a good fit for MMP elections. We think that they are uncertain and complex. And most of all, we believe they give a massive advantage to the big parties. So the medium-sized parties, like the Greens and like ourselves, we see as being disadvantaged. And I'd like to just read out the, the, the amount of, amounts of money that are actually involved uh, in those allocations for opening and closing addresses. In 2014, National was allocated $1,053,622, Labor $919,829, Greens $401,380, New Zealand First got only $200,690. Even the tiny Maori Party got $100,345, while the one-member ACT Party still got an incredible $76,930. There is no clear proportionality involved in those figures, and goodness only knows how those specific amounts were actually calculated. New Zealand First has written to the Minister saying that our support for this bill would not be given unless those criteria were reviewed, but we have not had a response, so that leaves us in no other position than to vote against this bill because we see that this legislation is only doing half the job and the job will not be fully done unless and until those criteria are altered. And this is not the first time this has been raised. I remember it being discussed at, at, at the previous election, not just by us but by other submitters as well. So there is also a significant degree of support both among political parties and the public for changes to those criteria. Now, Mr Speaker, the particular ones that we would seek to be changed are these. First of all, B must be deleted because by-elections are poor indicators of nationwide support for a party. 
and by-elections are fought on an array of different circumstances. And, that, that, and I can show that to be the case, Mr Speaker. I can show that to be the case because, on the one hand, National got a hiding in Northland when Winston Peters stood there, but, but I think that could be in contrast to other by-elections, one that's about to be held in the relatively near future. So you can see that the circumstances in which by-elections are held are widely different from each other and nothing can, much can really be drawn from them except the particular issues around that by-election. So they are not a good means by, what, by which the uh, support for a political party for the purposes of the allocation of public money for advertising should be carried out. And B should or D should also be deleted because relationships between parties such as between Labour and the Greens are actually completely irrelevant. I fail to see how a relationship between one party and another one could have any relevance whatsoever on the allocation of funds for, alloc for, uh, for advertising at a general election. And, uh, and E, we feel, must be amended by deleting the reference to the words, quote, any other indications of public support for a political party such as the results of opinion polls, unquote, because opinion polls are notoriously inaccurate. Notoriously inaccurate. And I could go through, time won't allow me to do it, but I could go through the last two or three elections to show how grossly inaccurate those opinion polls were as far as New Zealand First were concerned. In fact, when I was first elected to this House in 2011, the opinion polls said that New Zealand First had 3%. In fact, we ended up with almost 8%, more than double what the opinion polls said. And that's just one of several good examples of that. And there are good reasons why some, some parties poll differently than others. New Zealand First, for example, it tends to get its, its support more from the older co cohorts of the, of the electorate, and, and opinion polls don't reflect that, and the way that they carry out polls uh, means that that shows that our support is not properly measured. And there are other reasons that I could give as well. So, Mr Speaker, while National could reasonably expect a considerable financial advantage from this proposal if those criteria are not changed, there would be a corresponding disadvantage for parties the size of New Zealand First and I think the Greens as well. So I think the, the enthusiasm for National for this half-baked approach, where only some of the changes required are being made, actually shows that the National Party sees where its particular advantage is and is not willing to fairly look at this as far as all parties in this parliament are concerned. And that, Mr Speaker, is why New Zealand First will not support this bill unless those criteria are also reviewed. And so that we would then get an opportunity to discuss that and to propose changes to them. Unless that is done, this particular bill is going to result in an even more unfair allocation of public money for broadcasting for political parties at the next election than even we had at the last election, and that was bad enough. As I say, Mr Speaker, this is a half-baked bill. It's one which is OK as far as it goes, but the point is it's only doing half the job, and if it does that, it's going to make the situation worse and not better. So that leaves New Zealand first, as I've said, in the position that we have no choice but to oppose this bill, but we'll certainly be taking a lot of notice at this at the select committee stage in particular, and New Zealand first will be moving at the stage of the committee of the whole house, a number of SOPs aimed at rectifying this situation so that National cannot do what it intends to do just to get an, another advantage for itself and disadvantage for the smaller parties in the parliament. John O'Neill. Thank you, Mr.